Hello, my name is Uchena Asagwa, and I am a graduate student working on an engineering education research related to YouTube problems. Today's episode emphasizes on one of the three components that we use to measure the effectiveness of YouTube problems. Other videos on tools that helped us answer some of the research questions looked at student perception of problem difficulty through the NASA TLX and a survey related to students' learning attitudes. Today, our focus will be on how to measure problem solving with the process rubric. First, let's go over what process is, why the name process is used as an acronym here. It is a problem solving rubric that measures the process taken in solving problems, specifically engineering problems. This tool is adapted from Benson and other group of researchers at Clemson. In our case here, we've tailored the process tool to fit into our course content. And the process rubric captures six stages of problem solving. The P is for problem definition, and it rates us score how well a problem is broken down and defined prior to solving. For example, identifying uh, intermediary problems that will help solve the overarching problem. The R is representing the problem. And if you're familiar with engineering problems, many require engineering diagrams to solve. So here, process two assesses how well an engineering diagram represents problem statements. O is organizing information. At this stage, a reader examines how well various pieces needed to solve problem are presented. These pieces could include information from charts, data tables, formulas, and so on. It could also be given values or information from problem statements. C is calculation. And calculations usually involve algebra to calculus and sometimes could also involve using computational tools like spreadsheets or equation solvers. The first S is solution completion. And here, the reader assesses the extent towards which the solution is provided for different parts of a problem without considering the correctness. And finally, the second S is solution accuracy. This stage measures the correctness of the solution or solutions provided. We built this process rubric into a web-based form and can be built on many online tools for easy data collection. Here is an example of what the process rubric looks like for one stage. We are looking at a stage that covers problem representation. Each stage starts out with a brief description of how the stage should be scored. Selection of score for the stage on a scale of 0 to 3. 0 is the least possible score and 3 would be the maximum attainable score. Lastly, an identification of possible misconception or errors found in the solution. Each of the six problem-solving stages captured in process rubric were weighted equally. And in our case, we aggregated and rescaled scores from 0 to 100. Our research using process has been published, and the link is in the description section. One way which we have used process is to compare ratings when students solve YouTube problems versus when they solve textbook problems. For example, in a material and energy balance course for chemical engineering students, we recorded slightly better problem solving for YouTube problems. And that could be because of the presence of videos in those problems, or maybe the real world context present in those problems. Another thing we have looked at is comparing scores across the six stages. From our research, we found that Stages of problem solving that involved problem identification 
and representation were the least difficult. On the other hand, the lower scores were in the in-solution accuracy stage. And that could just be because of a compounding effect from possible errors from other stages. Finally, we correlated problem solving with perception of problem difficulty. And when students perceive problems to be more difficult, they tend to earn lower scores in problem solving ability. The slope in parentheses can give us a measure of sensitivity of perception towards uh, problem solving. And here, when students solve textbook problems, perception influences problem solving ability more than it does when they solve YouTube problems. And this is where we come to an end in today's episode. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to check out all the videos in our channel. We have more videos about perception of problem difficulty and students' attitudes that complement this video.